Red 2 standing by, all 4 lit and in the green welcome back to Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. It's the bonus episode, we have finally completed the figurine quest. A very, very frustrating uh, pro uh, project, sorry. Even though you can very easily collect a lot of mysterious shells during the course of the story, you still have to grind for a lot and that gets very annoying. However, on the virtual console it's made a bit easier by the fact you can abuse the lottery game and save states in order to get money, then either buy them from the shop or use the slower but ultimately more cost effective method of going out into the field using your great spin attack. Anyway, if we talk to Karlov, the figurine proprietor, he will tell us about the Karlov medal, which you get for acquiring all the figurines. 136 in all, and 6 only appear after you've beaten the game. It's a bit irritating. You won't be able to pick up mysterious shells as far as I know. So, let's take a quick look at our figurine collection. So there's me, with fairly messy hair. I probably should read through them. A young boy who lives in Hyrule. He is close friends with Princess Zelda. Ezlo and Tom. A young boy on a quest with Ezlo to restore the Four Sword. With the sword's power, he hopes to remove the curse on Princess Zelda. Zelda herself, a bright and cheery princess from Hyrule's royal family. She loves to sneak out of the castle to visit her good friend Tom. Ezlo, strange creature that looks at first like a cap. He speaks roughly and treats Tom like a child, but he actually really likes Tom. Sorcerer Varty. When the young Minish donned Ezlo's magic cap, he took this evil form. Now he searches for the Light Force in his quest to become all-powerful. King Daltus, the King of Hyrule. Reported to have been a fine swordsman, he appeared in the Picori Festival tournament as a youth and fought to a draw with Smith. Minister Potho. The supporting pillar of Hyrule. He is also in charge of Princess Zelda's education, so when she goes missing he gets frustrated. Smith, the finest swordsman in Hyrule. As a young man he was a great swordsman. He and King Daltus are friends and enjoyed a pleasant rivalry as youths. Mayor Hagen, the mayor of the town of Hyrule. He is a collector of masks. He's built a shelter in into his garden just in case monsters ever attack Hyrule. Marcy. Second in command at Hyrule's post office, she's mellow and laid back, entirely unlike the high strung and easily excitable Stamp. Stamp, a busy, hard working postal employee, although he can be a touch edgy, and I presume they mean edgy as in, I don't know, a bit temperamental, not sort of dark, cringy, that sort of thing. The stamp he uses is his own personal one, so please don't borrow it. Thanks. Rem, the proprietor of Rem's shoe store. Using his secret technique, he makes shoes in his sleep. Princess Zelda is his single biggest source of income. Hyrule's version of Imelda Marcos there. Dr. Left, a gruff talking academic type who is obsessed with studying the Picori. He doesn't seem to be aware that there is a Minish living in his own house. Karlov, a sculptor of finely crafted figurines. Many consider him the best sculptor in all of Hyrule. He enjoys collecting mysterious shells. Borlov, owner of the chest minigame shop. Karlov's younger brother, he detests gambling, but he has made the biggest gamble of all, entrepreneurship. Now, I think the reason Borlov is really hard on you about gambling is because around this time there was a bit of a backlash against gambling popping up in video games. It continued for a little bit. There was, uh, for example, in Diamond and Pearl, there was a game corner there with various gambling minigames, but from black and white onwards, Probably the best timeline I can use, I didn't really have any. There is also a much more different to uh, Game Corner which is all about skill in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Stockwell, the handy neighbourhood gear seller also called Stockwell the well stocked. He complains that he's been too busy lately to see his dog Balkan. Simon, his mysterious dungeon simulation game is very popular in Hyrule. It gives players the illusion of fighting real monsters in real dungeons. Gorman. He wants to rent out his house in town, but he's too overbearing to attract a tenant. He doesn't even seem to realise what the problem is. Andrew. This young woman tends to her cuckoos in Hyrule Town. If you help her gather her loose cuckoos, she'll give you a reward. Brocco. Hyrule's vegetable vendor. 
He sells fine produce. He also argues constantly with the fruit vendor Pina over the health and benefits of vegetables. Pina, or should that be Pina as in pineapple? Hyrule's fruit vendor. She hates vegetables, so she won't even sell tomatoes, even though they technically are fruits. Freak. Beetle. Though he is an adult, he is very good at finding picolite made by the Minish, and he is very, very convincing about their healthful properties. The Postman, a very serious mail delivery man. He continues to make every delivery right on time every day. The Crenell Hermit, a hermit who lives on Mount Crenell. He has lots of kinstone pieces. He breaks that he won the festival tournament when he was younger. Monster Lady, a weird old lady living in Percy's house without his permission. She doesn't want you to turn the lights on because she's actually a moblin as we saw. Dumpe, the gravedigger at the cemetery. They say he has the power to speak with the dead. He fuses the kinstones he digs up with the local ghosts. Gustav, the royal spirit. The spirit of an ancient king of Hyrule who wishes to secure peace in his land from beyond the grave. He was very fond of the people of the Wind Tribe. Syrup, a wizard who lives in the Minish Woods. She sells magic items with odd powers. She's looking for an apprentice to whom she can teach her mystic spells. This would be Maple who appears in the Oracle games. The Great Butterfly Fairy. The Great but Butterfly Fairy of Mount Crenell. She, whoops, she provides you with a larger wallet allowing you to carry more rupees with you. Now this is inaccurate, she's actually in Minish Woods. The Great Mayfly Fairy of Mount Crenell. See, all three of them have Mount Crenell. She provides you with a larger bomb bag, allowing you to carry more bombs with you. The Great Mayfly Fairy is the one on Mount Crenell. The Great Dragonfly Fairy is actually in Royal Valley. She gives you a larger quiver, allowing you to carry more arrows with you. Percy, a poet who lives in Trilby Highlands. He comes home from a long journey to find his house occupied by an unwanted guest. Poor guy. Naru. She's looking for a house in Hyrule to move into. She is descended from a line of priestesses in the land of Labrina. Ferore. She's looking for a house in Hyrule to move into. She's a very helpful person, but people take advantage of her kind nature. This really bothers her. Din. She's also looking for a house in Hyrule to move into. She is a famous dancer from the land of Holodrum. The Joy Butterfly, a rare butterfly said to bring happiness to those who catch it. If you see one on your journeys, try to grab it. Gina, a strange genie who wants to fuse kinstone pieces, which is somewhat peculiar for a monster. She has a lot of pieces, so keep on fusing. Festari, a priest living in Minish village. He speaks some human languages. He sees that Tom is human with one look. He's a bit of a human enthusiast. Gentari, the elder of the forest Minish, he has lived among humans for a long time. He knows where the four elements are, and he has a twin brother in Hyrule's library. Forest Picori. Not visible to the eyes of adults, they delight in making humans happy by hiding helpful items and rupees under grass and rocks all over the world. Library. This town Minish Elder is Gentari's twin brother. Those large wings uh, that he is so proud of are trophies from a duel with a chicken as a Minish. Town Picori. These Minish like humans so much that they move from Minish village into Hyrule itself. They try to make humans happy, but it sometimes backfires. Malari. He lives with his seven apprentices in Mount Crenell, which contains all the mineral riches they will ever need. He seems gruff, but he's trustworthy. Mountain Picori. These seven students followed Malari from Minish village to Mount Crenell. Their song is actually a sign that they are full-fledged mountain Minish now. Goron. These rock and iron eaters once lived on Mount Crenell in Western Hyrule. Now their numbers are few and they live quietly in a cave. Minish Vati. Before he became a sorcerer, he was a simple Minish. He had always been entranced by the evil that lives in the hearts of men. Vassals. These vassals serve the King of Hyrule. They are loyal and diligent. Like the King himself, they are courteous yet frank. Library. The Royal Hyrule Library. Although the library is well loved, many forget to return their books, causing no end of trouble for the librarians. The Blade Brothers. All of these self-trained swordsmen have won the fighting tournament at the Picori Festival before. They see great potential in Tom. Wheaton and Peter. This couple bakes bread in Hyrule. Their tasty pastries hold a secret. If you're extra lucky, there'll be a helpful item hidden inside. Fun Day School. This is where all the children of Hyrule learn. Tom and Princess Zelda studied here too. The two teachers are twins named Tina and Dina. Mama's Cafe. This is the best place in town to relax. 
You can also pick up some good tips from the latest gossip to observations about the world. Happy Hearth Inn! This generous inn gives a gift to every guest who stays the night. Guests can unwind in the lobby on the second floor. Zill and Friends Zill is the one in the middle. He likes to wander around town with his friends. He knows a lot about the town and he might even have some info for you. As well as large dribbles of snot. The Carpenters It was Richard and Karen in The Carpenters, wasn't it? Anyway, these carpenters may be rough around the edges, but they do good work. They may seem tough, but they're in touch with their feminine side. Young Couple Romeo and Julieta grew up next door to one another. They're dating now, but they plan to marry once they get their pet's approval. Peaceful Hyrule 1 Peaceful Hyrule 2 And Peaceful Hyrule 3 Cuckoo! With a boisterous crow and a cute crest, these feathered friends are the most popular pets in Hyrule. The baby chicks like small bugs. At Lon Lon Ranch! This small ranch lies just outside Hyrule Town. Father and daughter team Talon and Malon run it, and they sell the finest milk in Hyrule. The Wind Tribe. The people who built the Wind Ruins. They now live above the clouds, suspended by their own magic ability to control the wind. Gregel and the Ghost. An old man plagued by an evil spirit. Coming to his aid will bring you benefit in the end, so if you meet him, you must find a way to help him. We've already done that. Tingle... siblings? Older brother Tingle, green, and his twin brothers Ankle, purple, and Knuckle, blue. They believe fusing kinstones will help them to meet fairies. David Jr. is just sort of along for the ride. Eeny and Meeny! The Hyrulean vegetables grown in their fields are exquisitely delicious. Apparently, Brocco sells the best of their crops. Hope he gives them a good deal. Goron Merchant. This Goron appears when you successfully fuse certain kinstone pieces. He will sell you expensive but rare kinstone pieces. Spookter and Spectre. Ghosts from the Royal Valley. The one in the blue cap is Spookter, and the one in the red cap is Spectre. Spookter tries to be scary, but he's just not. And our enemies, the Sluggler. Appears in Minish Dungeons. They drop from the ceiling unexpectedly. They are slow, so take your time and defeat them one by one. Scissors Beetle appears in Minish Roads and Dungeons. These monsters have sharp mandibles. Hit them when they shoot these away. Avoid their attacks to get in close. Maltworm appears in Minish Roads and Dungeons. They come out of the ground when they sense prey. If you get swallowed, you'll take damage and get all dirty. Spite Beetle appears in Dungeons, covered in hard spiny shells. Few attacks work on them. You have to flip them over to hurt them. Igor Statue Appears in Castle Wilds. They move when you put an arrow in their eye. No other attacks work. You can always just let them pass. Business Scrub. Appears in caves, etc. Normally stay underground. They'll pop out and spit seeds at you, but if you get to know them, they're not so bad. Armos. Appears in the Wind Ruins. Built by the Minish for the Wind Tribe long ago. They look like stone statues, but if you get too close, they move. Interestingly, they're implied to be mechanised in this game. Keys appears in various areas. These bats live in dungeons and caves. Their movement is unpredictable, so use ranged weapons from a safe distance. Keaton. And these do not look anything like Keaton from Majora's Mask. Appears in various areas. This thieving fox preys upon travellers and merchants. He may not be strong, but he will attack very quickly, so be careful. Gini. Appears in the Royal Valley, Dark Hyrule Castle, etc. These dark beasties are attracted to light, and if they attack you, they may suck your life away. Gibdo Appears in the Palace of Winds. These mummies keep coming at you when you attack. It's better to fight from a distance if you want to avoid damage. The Rollerbite Appears in various areas. His hard shell protects him from swords, but once he rolls into a ball, you can use the Gust Jar to draw him in. Spark Appears in dungeons. They cling to walls and move quickly. Normal attacks may not work, but the boomerang is pretty effective. Darknut Appears in Dark Hyrule Castle. These armor-clad soldiers are tough. Use your shield and roll attack to find an opening in his defenses. Red Darknut Appears in Dark Hyrule Castle. These Darknut commanders are strong, but if you relax and find an opening, you can still defeat them. Chaser Appears in dungeons. They move quickly to chase you once they spot you. If you attack, they'll stop. Use that to your advantage. Rock Choo Choo appears in various areas. These tough Choo Choo's have rocky heads. It will be hard to damage them until you can knock that rock off. Moldor 
appears in various areas. These guys move quickly and randomly. Trap them in a corner and take them out quickly. Door Mimic appears in the Royal Valley and Dark Hyrule Castle. They look like doors, but they're really traps. If you get too close to one, it will fall down on you. P Hat appears on Mount Crenel, etc., rather than various places. These strange beasts hover on propeller like leaves. You can pull them out of the sky with your gust jar. Presume that works on the green ones? Helmosaur appears in various areas. Their fronts are protected with metal masks, but their backsides aren't. Pop off that mask for an easy battle. Wallmaster appears in dungeons. If these guys grab you, they'll send you back to the start of the dungeon. Dodge them as they fall, then attack. Floormaster appears in dungeons. If these guys grab you, they'll send you back to the start of the dungeon. Watch out when he attacks with others. Acro Bandits appears in the Eastern Hills, etc. Five of them pop out at once. If you smack each one as they pop out of the ground, they're a piece of cake. bob appears in dungeons. They often gather in groups in narrow areas. Once activated, they go a little crazy. Take them out with arrows. Bomarosa appears in dungeons. They float in the air and explode when touched. Walk carefully and you may escape unhurt. Like like appears in caves, dungeons, etc. Don't let them grab you, they'll eat your shield if they hold you long enough. Swing your sword to escape. Rupee like appears in caves, dungeons, etc. This rupee like has a rupee dangling from its headstalk. This clever lure attracts greedy and delicious heroes. Rope appears in various areas. They'll come straight for you if they spot you. Just swing your sword when they charge at you. Boulder appears on Mount Cronell, etc. I think it is just Mount Cronell. These huge boulders come crashing down from cliff walls. They fall in a random pattern, so watch your step. Ball and Chain Soldier appears in the Palace of Winds and Dark Hyrule Castle. They're not fast, but that iron ball is a bruiser. Try to hit them after they swing the ball. Spiny Beetle appears in various areas. They hide under co common rocks and grass. Be careful because they can pop out when you least expect it. Spear Moblin appears in Minish Woods, etc. They rush you on sight. They also block head on attacks with their spears, so circle around to attack. Bow Moblin appears in various areas. They fire arrows at you on sight. Block these with your shield and then close in to attack. Cloud Piranha appears in the sky. They swim through clouds like fish in water. Attack them in that brief moment when they pop out. Moldozer. These were the ones I forgot the names of. They appear in Minish Roads, Dungeons, etc. There are red and blue ones. They may look small and weak, but their hard shells make them formidable. Pesto. Appears in Minish Roads, Dungeons, etc. There are red and blue ones. The blue ones are stronger and throw things down on your head. Puffstool appears in Deepwood Shrine. These mushroom beasties scatter spores all over dungeons. When their caps are red, they are invincible. Wizrobe appears in the Palace of Winds and Dark Hyrule Castle. They fire magic bolts from afar. Hit them when they appear so they don't cast another spell. Fire Wizrobe appears in the Palace of Winds and Dark Hyrule Castle. They wield fire magic. Hit them when they appear so they don't cast another spell. Ice Wizrobe appears in the Palace of Winds and Dark Hyrule Castle. They wield ice magic. They're weak against fire, so hit them with your... Now they say Fire Rod here in the European version. The Fire Rod was likely going to be an item, but it was dummied out and replaced with the Flame Lantern. Now, I think I might have wound up putting some boss subtitles in things. I've only just realised. I think I did it for the first two bosses and then forgot. Whoops. Wisp appears in dungeons. They float in midair. They won't hurt you, but if you touch them, you won't be able to use your sword for a while. They're essentially bubbles. Octorok appears in various areas. There are red and blue ones. They've appeared in every Zelda game to date. They spit rocks, so be careful. Interestingly, they would not appear in Twilight Princess. Golden Octorok appears in... well, we're not sure. The legendary Golden Octorok. It can't be confirmed, but they are said to shoot chunks of pure gold. Also appears in Not Sure, the legendary Golden Tektite. It has much more power. The legendary Golden Rope. It's much more aggressive than the normal ones. It will attack you on sight. Crow and Takuri. Appears in various areas. The black one is Crow. If you touch Takuri, he will steal rupees from you, so be careful. Lakitu. Appears in the sky. They float on clouds. They don't move, but they do throw lightning bolts. Steal their clouds with the gust jar. I think I used the can of Pachi on them. 
Stalfos appears in dungeons. Blue ones jump and red ones throw bones. See what happens when you remove their heads with the gust jar. I fortunately did demonstrate that. Beetle appears in various areas. They appear under rocks and grass. If they grab you, you won't be able to move. Swing your sword to get away. Choo Choo appears in various areas. Choo Choo's come in many colours. Each colour is a little different, but ranged weapons work well against all. Tektite appears on Mount Cronell, etc. They move by jumping long distances. Their movement can be unpredictable, so attack them when they are still. There is only one blue Tektite in the game. As mentioned, it's right at the top of Mount Cronell. Trap appears in various areas. A trap with sharp blades. Some are triggered by nearby intruders while others follow a set path. Lever appears in Castor Wilds, Mount Cronell, etc. These baddies move freely underground and pop up for a surprise attack. Keep your shield up. Matterpillar appears in Deepwood Shrine, etc. This caterpillar moves in a zigzag pattern. If you hit him on the nose, he gets upset and starts running around. Spiny Choo Choo appears in various areas. These Choo Choo's project spikes from their bodies at the first sign of danger. Try a well-placed bomb. The Octorok appears in the Temple of Droplets, frozen solid by the power of the water element. He's been frozen so long that his hunger is unbearable. Gyorg Pear appears in Palace of Winds. Females are larger than males. They fly around the Palace of Winds preying on adventurers. Big Goron. We will need to visit him. This is a legendary Goron with a body bigger than a mountain. It is so big that in fact that no one has ever seen it all at once. Big Green Choo Choo appears in Deepwood Shrine. A perfectly ordinary Choo Choo. Though not much of an enemy usually, they are terrifying to anyone Minish sized. Gleerock. Uh, appears in the Cave of Flames, a Gleok with a hard rocky shell found in Mount Cronell. Hiding in lava, this beast spews fire on everything it sees. Mazal appears in the Palace of Winds. Constructed by the Wind Tribe to repel intruders, this sturdy machine cannot be destroyed by any external force. Big Blue Choo Choo appears in the Temple of Droplets, an ordinary blue Choo Choo. Fighting him while Minish sized is daunting, but just try to avoid that electric attack. And now we move on to the six you get from beating the game. Zelda and Tom. These two became fast friends because of Smith and the King of Hyrule. Zelda wishes that the sometimes unreliable Tom wasn't just a wee bit stronger. I feel attacked. At least she's uh, found out how strong I can be now. Minish Eslo. The Minish Eslo, before he was cursed by, Va cursed by Vati, he is a famous Minish sage. Even among Minish inventors, he was renowned for his amazing creations. Black Knight appears in Dark Hyrule Castle. This is the strongest Dark Knight with a good balance of attack and defense. They will do anything to stop you. Vati Reborn. The Sorcerer of Vati took this form after draining the power of the Light Force from Princess Zelda. The evil beams from his eyes are devastating. Vati Transfigured. Once Vati's body has been shattered, this dark form rises up, all that remains of the evil sorcerer. Only the sacred four sword can defeat him. Finally, Vati's Wrath. This is the embodiment of purest evil, the final form of the power mad Vati. Its mind is consumed with a hunger for destruction. Find its weakness. Whew! Well, with all those figurines displayed, there is at long last a point to them. Let's head over and talk to this guy here. I'm a rich guy, see? And I'm a collector to boot. Uh... Oh, there we go. Whoa! You did it! I can't believe you did it! This is a totally complete set! How incredibly awesome! And you even got the legendary Platinum Medal! It shines with a beautiful light. Every collector's dream! What you've shown me here, it's just, it's just amazing. Here, feel free to go in my house and take whatever you want in thanks. Because, you know, I'm rich! <laughs> Sweet. Has he, got, has he got a good stereo? Has he got some good whiskey? Let's loot the place! At long last. I don't think it's entirely worth it. But the last heart piece in the game is now ours.
There we go, and we also get... Six hundred rupees, not bad. We also have a gramophone. This is a really fun phonograph you can listen to. Care to try it out? So, our music tracks. Might as well stuff around with these. There's our title theme. Don't recall that one. That's our theme for getting an element. Classic fairy fountain. I think that's a game over theme. Some of these might have been largely unused. So we've got Varty's theme. Eslo's theme. Intro cutscene. Climbing a beanstalk. That's actually a pretty good piece of music, in all fairness, for one that's not used very much. Classic Inside a House, which I think has been used since Ocarina of Time. I hate the chicken mini game. Ah, that's Syrup's Hut, that's right. Standard cave music. Elemental Sanctuary. I think a, pl a variant of it plays when Gustav talks to us. A classic overworld theme. Standard Hyrule Castle. Minish Village, a very jolly piece. Also very beautiful. Happy Hyrule Town, which we've probably heard a lot. Mini boss theme. And the boss battle theme. Short but enjoyable. Interesting that they have the Vaity Reborns theme. Here, but then again, I suppose it does play early on when he's attacking everyone at the tournament. Standard battle theme. Dojo theme. Mount Cronell. I'm partly doing this for myself because it's been a very long time and I can't remember which pieces where on this. Oh, this is the festival. Maybe they put it in the order they were composed, who knows. Is that the title theme's fairy fountain? Ah, oh, that's the King's theme, I believe. I 
think that must be the credits thing. One of Zelda's themes. Sorrowful version thereof. Ah, the rainstorm, bringing back memories of a link to the past. Castor Wilds. Royal Valley. Ah, the cloud tops. This one's really, really good. It's a pity you don't get to spend more time in this area. Dark Hyrule Castle, it's odd that's before Temple of Droplets and Palace of Winds. A link to the past cave theme. Temple Shrine. Haven't had Wind Ruins yet, I don't think. But there's Cave of Flames. And Fortress of Winds. Oh, ice physics. Bad memories. And this is kind of a letdown. Because you've got that beautiful sort of section that's got like the harp and synthesized harp and flute and it loops the sort of slightly techno-y bit it's disappointing oh this is our exposition card scene towards the end of the game throw back to the original Zelda with the royal crypt Oh, that one's the Sanctuary. The previous one, I think, was Gustav's theme. Farty Transfigured. Escaping the Castle. And the final boss. Final stage. Molmitz Cave. Very beautiful theme that plays at the beginning of the game, inspired by the credits theme from Ocarina of Time. I could probably stay and listen to these all day, but I'm just going through them quickly. There's Wind Ruins. And that's the last one on the list. 52 different tracks. The phonograph is nice enough. Now that we've managed to get pretty much everything, there is one more little thing I have to do still that I sort of forgot about in the thank heavens this is all done. The fastest way is to the cloud tops. And to wind up falling for a little bit. Stick our landing. And let's go talk to Big Goron. Who will very kindly move his hands out of the way. Welcome, Oh, Oh, what a tiny Goron you are. You make this big Goron happy with this unexpected visit to my distant home. Oh, 
Well, what is that you have there? Is that by any chance a shield? Well, among us Gorons, who know well a taste of steel, they are considered a fine delicacy. Little Goron, please, Goron. Let me just nibble on the corner, would you? I will give it back to you just as soon as I've had the tiniest taste. Won't you please just let me have a bite to lick a tiny crumb? But, little one, if I eat it, you will no longer have a shield. Do you mind? It's fine. Really? Oh, thank you, Goron. I'll dig right in. Oh, delicious. It has a deep, rich taste surpassing even the great praise I have heard. So, we do we do actually have to come back here, so... I'll see what happens with things. Might be able to just warp straight back. If not, I think we might have to beat the final boss again. So, we'll take our pitfalls. And see what we can get. Alright, looks like we aren't going to have to beat the final boss, so I'll make some preparations and then we'll come back and see him. And we're back. We are literally going to drop in on Big Goron. Let's see. Um, oh, delicious. That was excellent. Thank you so much. Now I finally know the legendary taste of a shield. And I will happily fulfill my promise. Let me just spit your shield back out again. We have the mirror shield. This mighty shield shines like a mirror. Use it to reflect enemy attacks. It's mostly a cosmetic award. Oh? It seems your shield has changed shape a little as I was chewing on it. Oh, but it's fine. It is still a shield after all, just a slightly different shaped one. I think. Well, I have to go now. Goodbye, Goro. Well, let's go and find some enemies to test it on. Octorox will probably be our best bet. Because if I'm going to be honest, the Mirror Shield is basically a cosmetic award in this game, as I said, and it's a bit of a fizzer. Let's put our shield up. But there you go. Come on. The mirror shield, when it blocks an attack, will shoot a laser back at our opponents. They'll defeat Octorox in one shot, but let's go and find some bow moblins in the western woods, see what happens with them. I think we have to head down here a little bit. All right, so it does probably about as much damage as our regular sword, as our main sword. That's not too bad, but it really isn't that special in all fairness because you don't have any reason to use it. It's a bit disappointing because not counting remakes, this is actually the Mirror Shield's last appearance. You don't get it in, you don't get it in Twilight Princess. You'll get the Hylian shield really early on and there is no point using anything else. There's the Goddess's shield in uh, in Skyward Sword, Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks. I think just have a standard shield. It's been a while since I played them. Well, wait, a link between worlds 
I think A Link Between Worlds might have the Mirror Shield. It's been too long since I played that as well. So yeah, basically spin attacking through here and using the green Piccolite was what I did to farm Mysterious Shells, by the way. Now that makes me curious, now that we have all the figurines, what happens with that? Might need to find out what's going on with the Mysterious Shells simply because I'm curious. I presume we can still get the Piccolite, but... Well, we don't have a slot for it, but let's mess around with the last bit of this. Wasting our money and seeing what we can do with Green Piccolite. If we can actually do anything, that is. And I just got myself fixed up too. Way to walk into an end. Oh, fairy, that's okay. So, we've finally made it through the big adventure. We've defeated many enemies, faced plenty of trials, done a lot of grinding for figurines, and ultimately saved the day. So yeah, as I suspected, you do wind up wasting your money if you buy Green Piccolite after you've completed the figurine side quest. Not surprising in all fairness. But there we go. We've wrapped up pretty much everything we can do in Hyrule. We've found all 44 heart pieces. We've found the secret heart container. We've bashed plenty of bosses. We've worked, a l we've worked hard to get those figurines. We've changed Hyrule for the better. And we've ultimately managed to save the day once again. It's been quite an expansive adventure when you really do get to exploring all the nitty gritty the Minish Cab has to offer. You, where are you? Sorry, I'm going to do this out of spite for having my ending. Screw it, sword. So, my ending did get interrupted a little bit. But let me put it... Let me just phrase it right. We've come a long way from our humble beginnings. We've explored dangerous dungeons. We've saved... We've ultimately saved a princess. We've managed to get all 44 heart pieces, the secret heart container. We've fused kinstones 100 times. We've obtained 136 figurines. We have all four elements, the legendary four sword. And we've grown into a true hero. I wonder what Eslo has... Eslo will probably have something to say about our upcoming boss fight. But, as far as we're concerned, Hyrule is safe. Varty is done for. And we've completed everything we can. It's been a pretty fun adventure. It has been an absolute delight going through this. Showing off the best this game has to offer and hopefully... It's encouraged you to give it a try yourself. It really is worthwhile. It is a lot of fun. There's so much more to do, even if the main story is fairly short. Once you start exploring, it all comes together. It's a wonderful adventure, packed up nicely into one little package. Anyway, that's pretty much it for now. Not much more for me to do, I'm afraid. But what I will be doing is taking a little time in between this and the next project just to get some things recorded and finally work on the icon for it. It's a bit fiddly, but I'm making it look pretty fancy. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Be good to yourself and to one another, and I wish you good health. Until the next mission, this is Red2 returning to base. <laughs>